Hi everybody, thanks for joining me again today. I'm Pastor Deb of South Presbyterian Church in Rochester, New York, and this is Prayerful Pause with the Pastor. A few moments to think of something greater than ourselves, and for a few days now we are focusing on this book, Holy Envy, and um, something else that, uh, that she shares in the book is reference to a theologian named Raymond Panikkar, P-A-N-I-K-K-A-R, uh, who was a Roman Catholic priest. Uh, one parent was Catholic and the other, I've forgotten what, hmm, Hindu maybe, I think, maybe. Um, and uh, so he grew to become um, um, a Catholic theologian. Uh, he lived from, uh, let me just look here, from 1918 to 2010. Good long life, my goodness. Bless him. Um, one of the things that he talked about was the world's religions in terms of rivers. And when he was writing, he was talking about um, how there, uh, we separate our thoughts about religions and it can be symbolized through rivers. <clears throat> the Jordan, the Tiber, uh, yes, the Tiber and the Ganges, which, of course, uh, um, Jordan was running through Israel and Tiber through Rome and then the Ganges in India. And uh, as uh, she points out in the book, probably if he were writing today, he would add the Tigris and Euphrates, which also run through, um, uh, you know, Syria and, uh, and Iraq uh, and Turkey. So... Um, to bring in the Muslim world. I think uh, the point that she's making that he makes is that we identify with these rivers uh, at the local level, but that all of the rivers send moisture into the air and that spans over the globe and the rains come down um, nourishing the entire planet. I just love that image so that we think of ourselves just in this one portion of the planet and and or in this case one uh, theological stream river but in fact we are replenishing each other and there's no distinction when you get into into the heavenly realms where the clouds are there's no distinction about where the water came from I think uh, I just want to point out that I would extend that also to just being thoughts. I think that we um, we may follow a certain thought line or societal line, but ultimately, especially now with global telecommunications, we influence each other all around the world. And what a wonderful and good thing that is. It's just that we have to uh, recognize that holding on to a provincial idea of who we are is really outmoded. It just does not apply anymore. It's not reality in the 21st century. And yet, as I look at this and I watch the news, um, where we've just had French elections and we're going to have American uh, midterm elections and, you know, all around the world, we find groups of people who just want to return to the way things were, they say. I'm not so sure that's really what they mean. But that they want to go to a simpler time when there was uh, almost a clan-ish kind of um, a tribal understanding of identity. And, um, you know, you can't go back to what was. Um, not in this day and age. Maybe... If there's an Armageddon, post Armageddon in that apocalyptic time, maybe, but I don't, I don't know that that will ever happen. I don't believe, I don't believe in Armageddon. Um, so it's not practical for us to hold on to that idea. And this image of the the rivers um, providing rainwaters for the entire planet, I think, is very apt. I hope that we can talk about that with other people, even if you don't remember Panikkar's name. Um, but just carry forth that idea and talk with friends about it. I think the more we can spread this understanding of who we are today and getting away from the provincial 
local identity of um, that excludes, frankly. Um, from my perspective, as a Jesus follower, Jesus did not exclude. He thought he was coming to be just the a prophet for Israel, but through his ministry and people talking with him, like the woman, the Syrophoenician woman at the well, helping him to realize that, no, his message was meant for bigger things. And then we see it in the early church where there was a whole debate. Do we... Uh, do people have to become Jewish before they become Christian? And, of course, no. Paul won that debate, thank goodness. And um, uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have spread to the extent that we, that we have. Um, you know, we were able to just welcome people as they are, drawing the circle wider and wider and wider. Um, I think it's along the same line that this idea of the rivers and the global waters fits in. I invite you to think about that today as our prayerful pause with the pastor draws to a close. I look forward to seeing you next time. And while you're thinking, God bless. Take care and bye for now.